Tell me if you've heard this one before. You're watching a YouTube video or reading a blog about your favorite series. That series decides to do something different in one format that causes fan outcry upon the world. And that iconic phrase from Snob of the Week, well, in the original source material, blah, 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 blah. Just shut up. Hello, people of internet land, my name is Shannon, your friendly anime misfit, and I think following the source material is highly overrated. Yes, I'ma be that person. I'm so tired of hearing, seeing, smelling, or tasting the gospel that is full of source mat or die. In this video, it's going to be a rant about why I think that mindset is so toxic. Will it be heavily biased and overly filled with a crazy girl's opinion? You bet your sweet bippy. Do you have to agree? No. No, you don't. So let's all be good eggs and have a meaningful discussion in the comments, shall we? Starting with point number A. It's inflexible. Following the source material, depending on the source material, is not a one-size-fit-all transfer between different forms of media. Whether that's manga to anime, light novel to manga, or Nobunaga to every former pretty boy father you can imagine. An easy example is the use of filler. Nowadays, a long-running series is an economical risk in the anime world. And if you have a heavy lore series that takes a while to really get going, like say, the 2003 version of Full Metal Alchemist, then at that time, you have to make changes to adapt. This is more true of a fact when you consider not every series like this one gets a brotherhood treatment. Take some more recent series like Erotic on Guitar or No Game No Life. They were following the source material just fine and took a few weeks to grab people's attention, but by the time things were really starting to get somewhere, these shows brick walled themselves with incomplete endings. For me, it comes off as unfulfilling and frustrating as a waste of my time. And then the show turns around and goes, hey kids, do you feel a smack in your blue balls for not having that satisfying climax? Max of a fulfilling story? Well, good, because you can always finish the rest in the original source material. Well, fuck you. While it's true that the anime industry advertises hard like a Florida billboard spreading awareness about fetus rights, that type of practice doesn't make me want to go buy the material. It just makes me want to move on to the next series that will respect my time as a viewer. Speaking of another point regarding inflexibility is the lack of respect of your time. This year alone, we are getting truckloads of anime each season where no one person can consume in a timely fashion. So it's integral for a work to follow through with their goals, satisfying the fans who find their works out in the millions of the sea. I will gladly throw my money more at a series that tries to tell a concise story from beginning, middle to end, than play anime loot box to a series that may or may not fulfill that type of experience I'm looking for. A perfect problem child to this is the entirety of the reverse harem genre. I spoke a little bit about this in my review of Diabolic Lovers, so I implore you to give that at watch. One, the show the flat show out lies, lies to you about, about how menacing it's going to be and ends up being a shit show, show with 99, 99 problems, problems with this with bitch this being one. If you want to know more about my opinion. But in general, I may love this genre as my guilty pleasure, but loathe how little respect it gives for its demographic, aka us women's. Beach not even Shonen's pulled this bullshit to its audience of 5 to 14 year olds. Examples include janky episode plots where nothing is fully realized or explained, the over embellishments of its male cast because females only care about ships and hot guys, right? So we don't need to tell a fulfilling story or sequence of events, unexplained plot devices, and characters that make no sense in the context of the anime, but only to the hardcore video game fans that play after. Sequel itis, low budget animation, female leads that are exciting as a brown paper bag. Oh, I'm sorry. That's an insult to the brown paper bag. Uh. Plot holes for days. A literal ad at the end of the last episode of Otano Prince Sama season two. You aren't even trying anymore. What I'm trying to say is that you cannot just copy and paste and hope for the best. You lose so much in translation. On top of the added deterioration of losing the respect for the fans who do give a damn. You gotta let your show breathe for the in-case emergencies that sometimes goes wrong. Or else you'll end up like this anime where its inflexibility became its downfall. But I've talked enough about this point, so let's move on to point number dos. It's creatively stifling. I feel like this point is much more relatable to understand than the first one because it's so based on preferences. However, when a series focuses on the source material too much in my opinion, it leaves a kind of stale taste in my mouth. One that burns with mediocrity and becomes easily forgettable after the season ends. Don't get me wrong, there is a good market of anime that follows the source material that do have the staying power, but that's because its foundations are so solid. You want proof? 
Well, that can easily be tracked back to last season, for example. Okay, so raise your hand if you saw a decent amount of anime last season. <coughs> I can't see what it is, so I'm just gonna put you on the honor system. Now keep your hand raised if you are confident you can remember every one that you've watched, not just finished. Because I bet now all of you kept your hand raised, now did you? I believe the seasonal competition is a flaw to the source material format because it really puts the source material's power on the line, and if it's not good enough, who's to say its adaptation is going to be any better? This is why so many of the most memorable series, good or bad, have been original works. Now, I want to clarify the difference between an adaptation and an inspiration, because most type of media, original or not, has to come from some other idea based on the creator's experiences. In my opinion, Mary and the Witch's Flower, for example, is an original work because while it may look like and sound like and feel like a Ghibli movie, it's not. It was helmed by a studio full to the brim of ex-Ghibli employees, and the idea from the movie itself did come from a book called The Little Broomstick, but the work on its own has enough ideas deviating for its own sake that it's kind of more of its own thing. You don't need to read The Little Broomstick to enjoy the movie, nor does it solely exist to sell the book. Compare that to most anime nowadays, where they start as another material, then get readapted with little change for the sake of spreading awareness. The end result of both examples are far from different means, and therefore have different purposes. So, I guess the only other main point I want to make about creativity is that I personally think original works slash deviations into original content are just more fun and better for the industry as a whole. Yeah, they have more risk. Yeah, they cost more, and if it doesn't work out, you've pretty much lost a lot of revenue. But regardless, I do like seeing those original animes being like an Annie chart list, even if they are going to be shite, because it breeds more ideas. There's only so much ideas that can be rehashed before people get tired of it. I mean, look at the isekai genre. Plus, franchises like Pokemon or Sailor Moon are only nostalgia-inducing because they did their own thing. Darling and the Frank, for all its bumps, gives us an opportunity to watch two studios collab on something otherwise non-existent if they followed another source material. And even for a series like Pop Team Epic, which did follow a good amount of the comics, the sheer adaptive talent of the people who worked on it and the bells and whistles added for the anime really made the show shine in popularity. Community fanfare, when creatively implemented, will award you when you take that risk. Though I can't promise your work won't be in the heat of criticism, even if extreme criticism. Segue to the next topic! It can breed toxic behavior. Not all the time, but a good amount of the time. I saved this one for last because outside of the hardcore fandoms, the common Jane doesn't really rebel in such a manner, but I feel it's still important to touch on. Plus, I wanted to share a personal experience that rings to this problem, so I couldn't waste this chance. Let it be known that I find toxicity of people flaming others for a change in work ignorant and a waste of energy. It just feels really wasteful, man. And don't get me started on the, well, actually comment. You know them. If you've posted your opinion about any type of media, you've probably gotten this comment at least once in your life. Phrases like, well actually Shannon, it's pronounced like this. Well actually Shannon, in the manga. Why actually? You can just stuff an onion up your nose for all I care. It's like people forget we are all passionate fans and humans on the interwebs, and the store is filled to the brim with chill pills down the road. Take my word for it, they're cheap, affordable, and some of you could have really used it. It's one thing to politely correct someone to start an informative conversation. It's another to be a dick about it. And as someone who does not have one, you're the one that's just gonna tire themselves out in an elitist propaganda that I am not taking a part of. Now I'm not saying that it's never going to happen, that's just how the internet works. Or that you shouldn't voice a devil's advocate when you have something to say that is informative. But it's how you say it, not how you spray it. But anyway, story time! Back when One Piece was entering the Fishman Island arc, I was a avid material hopper. Still am! At the time of watching the anime, I remember seeing this argument in a form, I forget which one, about how bad the anime was thrusting Koala's backstory into the arc at the time, and how in the manga, it was done much more elegantly. The problem I have with the comments being said is that it slowly became very toxic, taking on a tangent about how uncultured anime onlys were at the structure of manga pages, and to my idiotic choices, I decided to reply in the form. Why? I don't know. I just thought their comments were no longer being constructive, and just a means to flow their own egotism. 
I think I was bored at the time. Probably that's why I did it. So unsurprisingly, they replied with things I refused to repeat. Yeah, I can't ask for it in the hindsight of things. But what I'm trying to say is that you can have your own opinion, but no one will want to take you seriously if you hoot and holler in such a manner. It's true that the translation of manga pages to anime scenes can be difficult and feel too slow or fast sometimes. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. Entertainment on the cusp of ramen land that we all love. And we should continue to consume such pastimes, not throw it up in each other's faces. But it's like I always say, just don't be a dick. Don't do it. Okay? Okay, so because this video is getting way too long, I'm going to cut it off here and just let you have my gripes. If you're new to the wonderful world of any misfitdom, how about you subscribe? Maybe even ring that notification bell so you never miss any content. If you're already in the Legion of Misfit Shenanigans and want to go beyond the Call of Duty, consider supporting me on Patreon, where I can hopefully one day actually put some money aside to dedicate to the shebang and have all my dreams a reality. Follow me on all my social media if you're so inclined, including my Discord server where I'm on it just about every day. Until then though, I think it's time to play a good game of catch up to make up for all the time I've been sick. Being sick sucks, but not as sick as Muck. You know, the Pokemon that looks like purpley goo and I should go now. Yeah. And now it's time for the super duper end card review poll. The time where I present three anime suggested by you lovelies up for review. One will rise to the top of the priority list, while the others get Spartan kicked to the back of the line, waiting once more for a chance at glory. So here we go! Alright, to participate, vote at the poll shown above or comment down below. You can also suggest an anime to add to the queue, all with the hashtag and card review poll. The winner will be announced the following week on my social media, so make sure you check those out to not miss any of the action. Happy voting, everyone! Shannon out!